Okay, uh, greetings to everybody. So you are once again welcome to Electrical Energy. So that is a physics caption, Electrical Energy. Designed for integrated science students, right? That is non-science students. So we will briefly look at some concepts, static electricity and current electricity. So what is static? Static means at one place, right? It doesn't move static. So it is electricity which cannot move from one point to another. It is produced when the body becomes electrically charged. Okay. Electrically charged as they are rubbed against each other, right? So here. As they are rubbed against each other. So what do we mean here? When you try to rub two bodies together, like right, let's want to rub this marker, this plastic against this dry hair. It becomes electrically charged, meaning it can repel pieces of paper or attract pieces of paper, right? So the electricity you have produced as a result of the rubbing, okay, is what we call static electricity. Why is it static? It cannot move. If static electricity can move after rubbing, I just touch it to the light or the bulb, then the light should, should just come up, right? It cannot move. Now, which current is causing, or which electricity is causing the fan to move. That is not static electricity. It is, a, it is a current which moves. So we call it current electricity. You see that? So static electricity is produced at the point of rubbing. Okay? I think most of you have done this experiment before, right? You can pick pieces of papers or repel them. Now, uh, application of static electricity. We have paint spraying. So when you take a spray, the tip of the spray, where the spray passes, that is what we call the nozzle, okay? That nozzle, when you spray, you see the spray coming out like that, the spray. You can see the nozzle is so small, and all the spray molecules are trying to pass through it. Now what is going on? Now the nozzle is made a single charge, or it has a charge. Now the liquid passing through that small nozzle, what happens is that, the liquid passing through that small nozzle, what happens is that when they are passing through, they pick up the charge of the nozzle. And since they are squeezing through that small hole, right, there is friction, right, friction. So because of that friction, they all become electrically charged, the same charge. Now once they have the same charge, they don't come together again. They try to repel. Because if I'm trying to get closer to my brother, my brother tries to repel me. Because we have the same charge, okay? That is why you see the spray molecules coming out like that. You understand? Now, if you don't want the spray molecule to come out like that, then don't make the nozzle of the spray very small. Make it big. So that when they are forcing their way out, they will not rub. So it is due to the rubbing at the nozzle. That makes them very charged, right? So it is used in paint spraying. So when you are spraying a car, or mosquito spray, you spray. You see the spray particles going like that, right? Spray. They are spreading because they all have the same charge. Why? They are all forcing themselves through the nozzle. So they pick up the charge of the nozzle. So if it's plus, they are all plus, they all repel. So it helps to spread the spray or the paint uniformly on what? The surface. Are you okay? Good. So spread the paint uniformly on what? The surface. So when you take water pistol, when you shoot a water pistol, the water does not spread. It goes straight. The nozzle is not so small. So, application of static electricity is used in paint spray. Photocopy machines, yes. So when you put the book there, there's a drum, and there's a laser, the light, which passes over the book in the drum, right? So it scans that image there. Now it makes the surface electrically charged. So the, the, the toner, or the ink, the ink powder, or whatever you are using, right? So they are also of another charge. So they just get attracted. So the, the powder is spread on the printed or the scan surface, then the image comes out. It is also as a result of what we call static electricity. Now, dust precipitation, dust. You know dust, right? So, you can be working in an in industry or maybe a laundry where you used to clean this uh, large or huge carpets, right? These ropes, right? A lot of dust. So you need to precipitate or collect the dust in one area, right? So we use static electricity. So you make the dust the charge, then the container through it, the dust passes. It's also made uh, 
the same charge. So when they hit, they can't escape. So they are collected in the chamber, and you discard them, right? So that is static electricity. Electricity produced as a result of rubbing, right? So when you rub, it is produced at the point of rubbing. It cannot be transferred. That is why they call it static electricity. Now what is keeping this one moving is what we call current electricity. Current, it moves. Static, you are at one place, okay? Good. Now, current electricity. It is a flow of electrical charge or electrons through a conductor. A conductor can just be what? A wire. SI units for current is ampere. The SI units are scored in lower cases. We use symbols, right? Capital. Instrument used to measure current is called ammeter. That's the instrument. Electricity. It is the flow of electrical charges known as electrons through a conductor. A conductor. What conducts? What pushes the current from one place to another is called a conductor, right? This can be a wire. Sources of electricity. Where can we get electricity? We have cells. So they convert chemical energy to chemical energy, right? So you can pick your mobile phones. It's called a cell phone. Not to sell, a cell phone. C E L L. It uses a tri cell, right? So do you have electricity on your phone? The answer is yes. How do you get it? Is it connected to a wire from your house? No. You are, you are taking your electricity from the cells. So they are converting the chemical energies in the battery towards electricity. Are you okay? We can also have electricity from solar cells. For example, dry cell, Daniel cell, Lake and Chase cell, silver oxide cell are all cells. Now, solar cells, they work by converting the sun's energy towards electrical energy. So we have solar panels, they tap. So you can see them on watches and calculators. Now give me a calculator. So there's a solar panel here, right? If I take the battery off and the solar panel is really working and it's connected, right? Uh, the calculator will still function. But the solar panel is now serving the purpose of supply electricity. So in this calculator, there's a dry cell here and a solar panel. So when the battery goes down, the solar will help you, okay? So at night, you can't get any access to electricity if there's no battery. Now let's bring it under a fluorescent screen, right? A very bright fluorescent screen, right? Put our fluorescent light and it can access electricity. Now, generators. They convert mechanical energy. Mechanical is physical energy. You see the way generator vibrates, right? Physical, macho. Uh, so they convert mechanical energy into what? Electrical energy. So when you have a generator and you put it on, shakes. You try to convert the physical energy, right? Into what? Electrical energy. So these are the sources of what? Electricity. Now from here, we will move to what we call a simple electrical circuit. So let's go. A simple electrical circuit consists of the following, right? We have what we call ammeter. We have a cell. We have a variable resistor or what you call real stand. The resistor can be variable. It can be varied. We have a key or switch, a bulb or loop. Why do you call a bulb a loop? It is a load in the sense that it is consuming the power, right? So the electricity coming. What is consuming? Which appliances are consuming the electricity? Bulb, uh, a bulb is part, right? So it is consuming it. So there is a simple electrical circuit, right? We have ammeter, we have a cell, we have a variable resistor, a key or switch, a bulb or load, and a voltmeter. Why is a bulb a load? It is a load because it is consuming the electricity. Okay? That's a load. Good. Now the voltmeter is used to measure the voltage across the circuits. The ammeter is used to measure the volts. What do you use ammeter for? And I feel better. Measure current, right? And the cell provides electricity. You know that, right? The lungs, one here is a positive and this is a negative. There's a variable resistor. Very soon you see what a resistor is when we get to come to know. Now there is a bulb. There's a voltmeter. There's a key or switch. Now, for this reason, we have two types of circuits open circuits and a closed circuit. Let's watch it. This circuit is open. So if the current is flowing from here, from the positive like this, when it gets here, the, the current cannot continue here. Reason, it is open. 
So when you open the circuit, the current will not flow. So it is a circuit in which current does not flow. But when you close the circuit, that's what. If you close this circuit, the current will now flow, right? Good. So now my fan is moving. Is it open circuit or closed circuit? Yes, closed circuit. So closed circuit is a circuit in which current flows. Electrical symbols. There is a battery. Group of cells forms a battery. There is a capacitor. Capacitor, right? The plates are of the same length. You see that? This thing here is a wire connecting maybe another thing. Are you okay? There's also a wire. There's a resistor. This or this. You know the symbols you see in electrical circuits, right? So when it comes to the circuits here, you can see this, right? That is a variable resistor. There is a bulb or now. There is a galvanometer. Okay, so these are just some few electrical symbols, right? Now, how do we arrange bulbs in series? Bulbs in series connection. Let's try it. There is a bulb, there is a bulb. There is a positive terminal current, there is a symbol for current. I, the current is flowing from the positive terminal like this. Do you see that? You believe the same current will pass through two bulbs? You believe? Yes. So, for bulbs in series, same current passes through, as you can see. If the same current is passing through the two bulbs, the bulbs have the same brightness. Do you believe that? Good. Now, when one bulb goes off, the other is broken. The second is broken, right? In which way? When this is broken, this one will not come because the current will cease to flow, right? The second is broken. So is it good to do arrangements in series in terms of wiring? That is something to think about, right? Good. So when one goes off, the other will not come. Wow. So it means we have to use another form of connection, okay? It's going to be a parallel connection. So we have when we do series connection. So that is when we arrange bulbs in series. We have questions on the plenty. It's going to be resistors in series, bulbs in series, any of them. So these are bulbs in series. Are you okay? Same current flows through the two bulbs. They will have the same brightness. Why? Because the same current flows through, right? When one bulb is moved, the other does not have one. Another is moving, right? Good. So now let's go to arrangement of bulbs in parallel. Arrangement of box in parallel. So that is it. So look at the drawing very well. You can see this current flowing here. Now when it gets to this junction, I1 will pass through here, I2 will pass through here, right? Different currents are flowing through here. Do you believe? So box share total voltage. That is the one here. Different current flows through the box. It's true. I1 passes here, I2 passes here. Box may not have the same brightness as when in series. Why do we say so? Now the total current current I it divides into two. So you don't expect this brightness to be to be as well. The series, they're playing the series, right? For the arrangements in series connection, it's not going to be. Because see, one current which will have caused a higher brighter uh, brightness here is divided into two, one here, one here, right? So the brightness will reduce. Are you okay? Good. When one board is removed, the second is not broken. Good. So when one board goes off, it doesn't affect the other. So household wiring, power connection comes in, right? Arrangement of resistors in series. Resistor R1, R2, R3 in series. Do you believe same current flows through? The current will be flowing from this positive terminal. So same current, the same thing. So how do I find my total resistance? R1, R2, R3. That's a formula we'll be using, okay? Good. Now, arrangement of resistors in parallel. Look at the drawing very well. At the junction here, breaks to I1, I2, I3. So I1 passes through R R1, I2 passes through R2, I3 passes through R3. So different current flows through. That's true, as you can see here. Same potential difference maintained across each. What is potential difference? That is voltage, right? So same voltage. So total resistance in parallel here. Yeah. Have one over R total because one over R1 plus 1 over R2, plus 1 over R3. So when they ask you to calculate your total resistance in parallel, that is what we do. Total resistance in series, you move here. Are you okay? Look. Okay, so I'm going to, I'm going to talk, right? When I do that, I say, then turn back fast. But there's a challenge. You can turn back, and the person you are looking at is also turning back. So you can rewind. That's what you have to do. We're so much so true. You don't need any more.
So let's look at the terminologies here before we start any form of calculation here. So we'll be saying things like electromotive force, EMF. Now what is EMF? EMF is the force that drives current through a circuit or the voltage that is voltage. Or the voltage or potential difference at the terminals of a cell when the cell is on open circuit. In short, when you have a cell on open circuit, the voltage you measure is called EMF. That's all. It means a closed circuit cannot produce EMF. Are you okay? Good. So EMF is also in volts. Potential difference. It is a work done per unit charge in driving an electric current. In driving an electric current through a conductor, the unit is volt. Good. So the EMF, uh, the voltage you measure across an open circuit is called EMF. Potential difference. That's what this is. Also a voltage, right? Resistor of a conductor. It is the opposition offered to the flow of current in a circuit. That is, that is resistance. Not resistor, resistance. Okay, what is it? So when current is flowing, there is an opposition trying to prevent the current from flowing. That opposition is called resistance. Now when you have alternating current is flowing, the opposition you, you, you get is not called a resistance. It is called an impedance. Okay? So this is resistance of a conductor. Now Ohm's law. Ohm's law states that the current that flows through a section of a metallic conductor, right, is directly proportional to the potential difference maintained across its ends. Provided temperature, pressure, and other physical factors are kept constant. So the current which flows through a wire is just directly proportional to the PD. What is directly proportional? When I increase, you increase. That's direct. I decrease, you decrease. So mathematically, it is Ohm's law. That's all. So state Ohm's law. You can just write this in sentence. It's accepted. Just yes, yes. But you have to tell us where V is the what? Potential difference. I is the current. So we see anytime you have a variation symbol like this, when you remove it in comma variation, you introduce a constant, right? So our constant here happens to be the what? Resistance. Are you okay? By mass, you use K. So welcome. So I'm going to use this, do calculations through Ohm's law and everything, right? So welcome to calculations. <laughs>